Austria has been sneaking about in CSGO for quite a while. It was first featured in the latest operation, Hydra. That was way back in May 2017. In November of that year it slipped into casual play, and now, finally, in October 2018, it has reached the competitive map pool. So it's about time it was analysed. Here's the top-down view of Austria. Viewing this will give you a general feel for the map, but relying on this, you'll miss out on a lot of crucial details. If you're in the snow, then you're somewhere around the outside of this map. Run long enough in either direction and you'll eventually arrive at where you want to get to. But joining it all together is an indoor area in the centre of the map, which itself is a bit of a maze until you're used to it. CTs start up here, in a nice warm barn area, and the poor little terrorists start in the cold. All they want to do is to set off a bomb for warmth, and the horrible selfish CTs want nothing more than to stop them from doing so. Or at least that's my interpretation of what's happening. As there is no official story, you're free to make your own up. And here is where the two teams will meet. Roughly. If you rush immediately from spawn, then expect to face resistance by the time you encounter these parts of the map. And now I'm going to analyse these contact points in more depth. But first, which is the best spawn point? Terrorists are easy to analyse. The ones furthest forward will arrive wherever they want to first. If you spawn in front of these pillar things, then you've got a very good spawn indeed. This poor guy at the back, stood next to the creepy green Gordon Freeman, has no chance. If you spawn exactly here, you have gotten the worst spawn in the map, and you have my permission to bait your teammates. As for the three at the front, there are only two ways you can go, left and right, so it makes sense that this guy here is the best spawn for A, and this one here is the best for B, and for everything else as well. Over to the CTs now, and it's a little more complicated as there are five spawns vying for power, but luckily, there are only two exits. The first leads mainly to A. Between these three spawns, it's a toss-up between these two. One will block the other, claiming victory and reaching A first. I think a good case could be made for either of these two guys, but I'm going to go with this one here, whose spawn looks like this. If you get this one and you want to rush somewhere, go A. For B and middle, I'm going to go with this spawn, as I think he has priority over the others. His spawn looks like this. Let's begin. This is Cat of War. He has a YouTube channel with all kinds of content, and on top of that he's also pretty good at holding down W and avoiding obstacles. He will be meeting me halfway in this video, literally. We started by running long A. This route is surprisingly tricky for terrorists, he must first dodge a bench and then must weave between the church buttresses. By the time terrorists can see the site, the CTs will have had plenty of time to establish themselves wherever they choose to go in bombsite A, and they can even push on a fair way towards where the terrorists will emerge from. Tossing a nade at the CTs the moment you can see down to the church would be a great way of punishing early pushes. Honestly, as terrorists you'd be better off using this wall here to lob grenades over and to help with the delayed rush or something. When it comes to rushing A, terrorists don't have much of a choice other than to push this one route, but CTs have an alternative, which I'll cover now. Just before they reach bombsite A, they can head down this slope and into this area. This leads around to the side entrance, whereupon CTs have time to hide anywhere in the room they like before the terrorists arrive. Poor terrorists. Not only are they forced down one route, but the only alternative route they have on the way to A is also dominated by CTs. But there's one ray of hope for the terrorists, and that's middle. Because although CTs are first to this room, they are exposed to terrorists rushing from middle, who will come up behind them. I mean, that is unless CTs can reach middle first as well. Let's put it to the test. Oh, by the time the terrorists have reached the first indoor corner, the CTs are already there and waiting for them, so I guess we should move on to B and to see if the terrorists have a chance of getting somewhere first. You can see that the CTs cross the bridge remarkably early, and the two teams meet around this corner here. I mean, it's understandable that the CTs can reach the sites and stuff first. That's how diffuse maps generally work. But it's still unusual to see them reaching all of the important crossroads before the terrorists do. This map sports a few points that you'd assume terrorists would reach first, without the prying eyes of the CTs there to judge their decision. Returning to the map view, terrorists effectively control this bit of the map, while the CTs hold this, which is quite a bit. I haven't played a lot on this map. I suspect it's in the competitive map pool because it plays well. It's just unusual in my opinion for map controls to look like this, with every route the terrorists choosing to go being contended by multiple CT paths. There are two other interesting variations that we can do at B. The first is if the CTs rush the indoor route and jump off the balcony. Again, we see they get there remarkably early, early enough to spot any terrorists heading towards B from either of the two main routes available to them. 
And don't forget, as well as this balcony position, the terrorists also have to contend with CTs sniping from across the bridge, as well as holding numerous spots across the B site. This is a scary place to push. Suddenly, this far route into B feels like a good idea. So, what happens if both teams rush this far side of B? Let's forget for a minute that the terrorists will risk getting sniped as they rush across the first path to B. Here, the CTs reach the entrance of the hut as the terrorists climb to the top of the stairs. This position may favour terrorists in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but letting CTs push this far forwards does again offer them many places to defend from along the way. I feel that D Austria gives CTs a lot of map control. As a terrorist, rushing this map may not be your best strategy. You'll encounter enemies long before you can reach the sites, so perhaps the emphasis will be on working as a team to attack a single spot, and to rely on setup grenades to block off the most popular places for CTs to lurk. The middle of this map, in the house, will be a crucial spot to hold for the terrorist side if they wish to win the round. It will open up a lot of routes across the map, helping them to break through an otherwise solid CT defence. As I've said, I haven't played a lot on this map just yet, but Austria certainly looks like it'll play differently to the others in the map pool. Give it a go and see what you think. Thanks to Cat of War for helping. Check out his channel for videos about CSGO, tech, trains and digitally building PC systems for virtual people. If you like this analysis, then check out this one that I did for D-Season, a map that's no longer in the map pool. And what about this one for Canals? Another map that's no longer in the competitive map pool.